Hey guys, my name is Paul Brumbaugh, it's Friday, April 15th, and I'm sitting here in downtown San Francisco in beautiful edgestudiosonline.com, and you're on the edge. I'm hanging out with a good old friend of mine, and wow, it goes back more than two decades. Give it up for my friend, Joseph Mihares. Joey, what's happening, my friend? Oh, Paul, just sitting here in uh, beautiful Texarkana, Arkansas today, and uh, just doing my recovery and what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah, now you had a crazy 2021. I know everybody else did out there, but you really did. You you really, yeah. really did. Tell us a little bit about how last summer was, almost a year ago, where it all kind of started a little crazier for you. Well, on my wife's birthday back in June, um, I had a barbecue for her and some friends over, and uh, she developed this really bad headache uh, directly above her shoulder blade, in her neck, and on the lower back of her head, and she didn't think about it. Oh, it just like, like pulled a muscle hole from sleeping wrong and things like that. Um, it lasted for about 45 minutes to an hour. After taking some Tylenol, it subsided, and we didn't think anything about it. We went on our way, and you know, had steak, burgers, dogs, and uh, had a really good time with our karaoke machine. And um, a few days later, um, she tries to get up out of bed, and uh, she can't move her whole right side. It's all numb. Her legs, her legs are numb. numb. Her, her right side of her face was drooping, and her right arm was numb. She couldn't lift it. So we called her doctor, and I ran her to the doctor to find out what was going on. It appeared she had another stroke um, in the back of her eye, is what they're calling it. So she's been recovering from that since June. And then in, in August of last year, um, we both contracted COVID. Oh. And, and uh, so we were down. She's recovering. Um, she can't get up, she can't get up to move, uh, she had a hard time getting up and going to the bathroom, but we, but after then, I caught it, I had it for a good 21 days, and I felt like crap. I finally got better, and then we started working on her road to recovery with, um, in-house therapy, um, getting her into the pool when we had a pool, and, uh, you know, off the therapy to help her, and then she started feeling better. She started to walk again. The numbness started going away, and everything's looking good. And then this past December 4th, I was cooking dinner, and um, I suffered a stroke while I was cooking. Um, putting garlic bread in the oven for uh, dinner with, to go with our spaghetti. And my wife, she says I was acting kind of strange. I was talking funny and making, you know, weird noises as well as trying to speak. And then I left, let out this really big belly laugh that she never heard. So her and the kids, they're busting up laughing. And then she asked me another question, and I was gibbering. And that's when she came to the kitchen to see what was going on. I couldn't lift my arm. Um, she said my face was drooping on one side. And that's when her and my 12-year-old daughter called 911. Um, I was actually having a stroke at that time. So, but they got me the help they needed from the time they called, by the time the ambulance got here, the time I was admitted to the hospital, um, I bypassed all the emergency stuff and went straight for a CAT scan. And so they started what they call a TPA, which is a blood clot uh, medicine. Um, it was like within 45 minutes from start to the about time they administered this clot buster, which actually probably saved my life and or uh, protected help from more damage that's been already done from having a stroke. So, wow. So it, yeah, so it's been a rough, a, a rough, a rough year, and I've been now, now four months on on recovery. So. Wow. That okay. So started off in the summer with Lori 
uh, on her birthday having a stroke. Yes. And then you guys try to get through the rehab of that. And yeah. then uh, come August, you both get COVID. Yep. And then after that, in December, you end up having a stroke. Exactly. Oh, and while Lori was visiting me in the hospital, let me throw this one in here, is that uh, after I got home, uh, after ICU, and then they finally released me, finally get me home, she con she contracts COVID again in December. Right. From, from going in back and forth in the hospital while she was visiting me because the ICU lounge was actually their COVID wing also. So it's just the one thing after another, you know, with the, the immune, your immunity gets uh, lighter when you catch COVID and when you have strokes, it's not as high as it used to be. So fighting off infections for us both is, is really, is something we have to really look at right now just to, to make sure it's not gonna get any worse right that's that's really scary uh, and, and so now you, you have three lovely daughters uh 12 13 and 14 years old and then you yes. have an older one that's 34. yes yeah and so now how are you guys making ends meet you and lori with the with the three young ones at home well uh you know, just we just barely make ends ends meet. So I was working, and uh, you know, as a, a driver. And uh, now that I'm not allowed to drive, uh, I have very limited income. Um, you know, Lori's been retired, and since she's had her strokes, um, she gets her retirement. Uh, so that that's basically what we're living off of, and it, it's not much, but uh, we're just barely. Hanging on, we have a roof over our house, and we have our lights paid, and a, a vehicle. And by the time all everything's all said and done, you know, there's hardly any money left for uh, extra food for the month. Um, we budget as best as we can, hit food banks when they come, and uh, things like that. And it's just been really, really tough uh, living off of one paycheck. When I was working, um, that second paycheck helps out dramatically. I mean, I never thought about it but it, it it makes a big difference and then all the prices have gone up gas has gone up and that just makes it that much harder so no i get it i get it and so your sister betty blake actually set up a gofundme page for you guys yes she did and i'm going to share that right now because check this out you won't believe it we're running out of zoom time so we're going to have to do this in two segments, <laughs> okay. but that's okay. Um, I want to show you guys uh, Joey and Lori's uh, GoFundMe page. It's right there in front of you. Go to GoFundMe. That's the actual page. I know that some of you guys are afraid to donate uh, on GoFundMe or Kickstarter because you're worried about it. Go there. Send a message. There'll be another means that you can get. Uh, if you're worried about it, but there's the actual real page um, for Joey and Lori Nihari's. Um, it's it's been tough for you guys. Now, it, 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 how are you guys going to get through this next so many months, man? Uh, I I don't know, Paul. Actually, I I really don't know. Um, you know, uh, every month when bills come in, we pay our we pay our electric, we pay our gas, water, um, rent, of course, and car insurance. Those are our top priority bills to pay. Um, the and, rest and we are. Bills, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, and then and then we just don't pay the rest of the bills, and we're just going to see what happens. All right, guys. Again, go go to this page, Joey Miharis and Lori. Um, it's the GoFundMe for for these guys, especially if you know somebody that's gone through this. The early signs is the main thing to really check out with this. Uh, it's been a tough road, but man, I, I know you and your family, it's going to be a strong thing, dude. And things are going to work out. Uh, so I want to thank Joey uh, for really kind of telling us everything about uh, what's going on with him and his family. 
And, and it's just been a tough, tough thing for them. I want you guys to go there, support whatever you can. It'd be great. Uh, it definitely helps when you have people supporting you in the background, right? I mean, it, it, it helps to know that people out there care. We care here at Edge Studios Online. We do. We care about people like Joey and Lori. And we want you guys to reach out to help your fellow human beings, especially in times like this. Man, COVID's been crazy. Um, I don't wear these shirts that say keep standing up for nothing. I really want you to go out and help a human being today. That might actually make you feel real good. Doesn't need to be Joey and Lori. It could just be your neighbor. Um, it could be your friend. It could just be a complete stranger. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Check us out at edgestudiosonline.com. And keep standing up. We'll see you next time here on The Edge.